Before we start, there are two things you need to know. One, this is a spoiler-free review. There will be no spoilers talked about here. That will be a separate video. Secondly, if you are a Marvel fan and your kids are Marvel fans, do not take them to see this movie. It is a hard R. Now, let's get into this. It is a miracle that this movie was made at all, and I cannot believe that somehow Hugh Jackman is back once again. So how does Deadpool come into the MCU? Well, honestly, with a fantastic prologue that is equal parts insane, will make people uncomfortable, and rightfully fitting for the character's introduction and given all the other movies that came before it in his universe. It completely owns it, and my wife and I couldn't believe our eyes. However, as it transitions into the opening act, it gets a little bit rough in places. It can be difficult to follow where we are, where we're not, how we got here, and there's several scenes, comedic in nature, that just go on for far too long. Certain moments aren't explained well and require some mental gymnastics to function, and that kind of goes without saying with multiverse stuff. Not establishing rules and then breaking assumed rules is kind of detrimental to understanding how the rules work in your movie, and that comes into play later on in the movie too. Loki season one is very necessary to understanding this one to the point that they actually joke about it in a meta way. Now, I think a lot of people are curious about what's gonna happen in this movie. I will just say that this is some of the best fan service in the MCU, up there with Infinity War, Endgame, and No Way Home. Maybe even more so in a couple elements. Some of the cuteness of it may annoy some. For me, as a lifelong fan of Marvel, I screamed multiple times like, could not believe my eyes kind of stuff at what was happening. And I'm smiling just thinking about it because it was so crazy. I was so happy in these moments and felt so rewarded for sticking with Marvel for so long. And I think it will be a huge crowd pleaser in that way. And I wanna go see it again in a crowded theater and not in a private press screening, just so I can experience these moments with other people. I mentioned this before, and as is the nature with Deadpool, the movie is extremely meta and self-aware, which is mostly great. Although once or twice that self-aware nature maybe goes a bit too far into winking at the audience territory. They have a lot of fun with it and that is appreciated. But at times it's like, eh, maybe, maybe a bit on the nose there. And of course with Deadpool, the humor is everywhere, right? It's incredibly crass, which is nothing new, but it can make certain people uncomfortable. And there's one particular running gag in the movie that's recurring, pokes fun at Christianity that kind of got old very quickly. I will say, I think that it is, as a Christian, it made me uncomfortable, but it's used in a way where they're trying to use it to reinforce themes. We'll get more into that in the spoiler territory and how that line actually is being used to reinforce themes, but it's done clumsily and it's done in a way that is very disrespectful to people of the Christian faith. And it was concerning from the trailer and unfortunately made worse in the movie. Other than that, I laughed out loud a lot still. The crassness as I get older just doesn't work for me anymore, but there is other solid humor here and a lot of fun gags, ton of references, so much wittiness going on that it's like blinking, you miss it, you'll miss something. There's stuff in the background, there's stuff being said. There's so much to digest, so many little nods that I can't wait to get this on home media and be able to pause it and point things out. I'm not quite sure if it's pronounced Sean Levy or Sean Levi, but he directs his socks off in this with incredible action sequences, which are not new for him. If you watch something like The Atom Project, that also had phenomenally like out of nowhere good action. But these are equal parts impressive technically and how they're staged with the camera. There's several long takes, but there's also a huge visceral feeling and shout out to the sound editor for making every stab and blood splatter feel gruesome and just oh, at times. I was a little worried about that because David Leach, who did Deadpool 2, directed the action so well in that and in everything he does, but it manages to match it and in some ways surpass it in certain scenes. However, we are here for the central relationship and it's wonderful. Ryan Reynolds is, ar is arguably almost iconic as Wolverine in his role as Deadpool, and his performance has surprising levity with the obvious buffoonery. The physicality is there, the wittiness, and the heart. And his chemistry with real life friend Hugh Jackman is undeniable. You can tell they have a blast and it makes everything on screen more believable. Both knocked it out of the park in drama and the action and Hugh Jackman reminds everyone why he is arguably the most iconic or at least one of the most iconic comic book character castings 
ever made. He's just definitive. And although that performance is incredible, especially a few moments, I wanted more from this particular Wolverine's backstory in terms of seeing it. We hear about it and what they accomplish and what they tell us is effective and compelling, but I was hoping for that extra layer of visual or tragedy or detail in what was told, but it still works. And the movie is just so full of charisma and heart and energy and it's unexpectedly moving by the end that I nearly teared up. I just can't believe the story that they pulled off here with so many surprises. I'm stunned. It rightfully pokes fun at the MCU multiple times and multiverses and that whole general feel of them, but it still falls victim to some of the same traps of that. The TVA and all of its gimmicks felt a little tacked on and out of place outside of inciting the plot. And I don't know how I felt about the humor involved in all of that. And it was the least interesting part of the movie for me. And then we have the villain, Cassandra Nova, who is definitely interesting, but way underutilized. Her backstory motivations are something to be delved into because they're weird, but we spend no time seeing them. There's a couple of throwaway lines, and then there's flip-flopping of motivation, and then a big anticlimactic like problem to be solved. It kind of feels like the classic Marvel villain problem where she's ultimately interesting, but throw away in the grand scheme of things. And that's the thing. The movie is messy and sometimes it embraces that and owns it. And other times it just misses the mark thinking that it owns it. There is a particular highly marketed moment that is a complete letdown in how it's executed. And the movie builds us up as this thing and then does the thing that you wouldn't think it would and it skirts by it. And I, I looked at my wife and she looked at me like, oh, and I was like, yeah, that was lame right there. And the thing about these multiverse movies, they don't have to be this messy. It's how they're choosing to execute them in the setup by not being particular about details that makes it messy. You have a movie like Everything Everywhere All at Once that is insanity, but it can still be followed because the rules are established and they are stuck to and they are made clear how the events happen. Marvel and DC are no stranger to these in comics and in animation. Why are they having so much trouble in live action? Now, while I have questions about how certain things ended up in a way that did towards the end and where and all that, it is a wonderful send off again to Hugh Jackman as Wolverine and the X-Men as a whole really beyond him in subtle ways that we never really got before. Closure that feels good because we had Dark Phoenix and New Mutants and then the merger happened and that was it. This franchise that's been around for so long. So that was pretty wonderful to see and feel and I felt it. Boy, did I feel it. But I am left curious how the future of Deadpool and the MCU will go. And with these messy problems in the setup and the story and some of the explanations, you can assume misgivings in your head easily with headcanon adjustments because here the emotional crux matters more. Now, that's not to say those other problems don't exist, but they chose one focus and went with it. I do think we can have both though. Music is used wonderfully here for fun and to enhance emotion. And boy, they went all out for the soundtrack. The licensing budget had to be very high. And that script is incredibly clever, but sometimes it shows no restraint and it leaves clever behind. Whether it's in story ideas and execution or just the humor. Some of the jokes will make people rip roaring in laughter, or slapping their knees. Some will make people uncomfortable or they're not funny, offensive, or just in poor taste, even for Deadpool. Now I get that that's kind of the point of the character, but still, I do think there are limitations on what you can expect audiences to know, catch, laugh at, and tolerate. And the MCU already has a problem with too much humor in its movies, and they mix some of the MCU humor-isms in here with the Deadpool humor-isms, and it doesn't always mesh. Most of the time it works, if you can deal with the crassness. And it is mostly hilarious, but the edginess of being able to repeatedly drop F-bombs for Wolverine and company and Deadpool and all them wears off very quickly. It is super gory. I've mentioned it's not for kids. Repeat, it is not for kids. And the gore here is effective. And you know, even though the setup is a little rocky, people give No Way Home crap for having a rocky setup with the multiverse. I think this is even rockier. But once it gets into the rule set and you get all you get past all those things, it does mostly work, even if it kind of throws them by the wayside towards the end. Now, it's been said that this is going to affect the MCU greatly going forward, and I'm not quite sure how that'll play out. And even if it doesn't, I'm okay with that. Because this works so well as a standalone piece of the Deadpool trilogy in the greater Marvel Universe that it doesn't need to be 
tied any further. It's a wonderful ending to that trilogy. I couldn't believe how moved I was by the end of this chaotic grass gore fest, but it's got conviction and I love it for that. And it was so good to see Wolverine again and donning the yellow too, and they give weight to that appropriately in the story. It's never that they joke too much. It's just some of the jokes don't work, but they do remember to balance it out with seriousness more so than most of the MCU movies do, and this is Deadpool we're talking about. When the action comes and they've given weight to the story and the characters and it does not forget character, I am invested beyond belief, more than I could have ever expected to be, and that is commendable. Caring about what happens despite questions, despite setup issues, despite a few disappointing moments, to be so excited, to feel the movie magic, that is what cinema is all about. While undeniably messy with some questionable lows, some dismissible and some absolutely not hand waveable, it's got some of the highest highs I felt in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that easily helped me nuance this as an achievement in ambition I was not expecting and I was expecting a lot. That deserves praise. I loved it. And as always with these scores, I'm usually within a half star of where I start. So I always retain the right to bump these down on Letterboxd later. Follow me there, shameless plug. I truly believe this is going to be special and remembered for years to come and seen as one of the more unique, daring, bold, and creative moments in the MCU in a fine, fine closing to the Deadpool trilogy. I give Deadpool and Wolverine 4.5 out of five stars. It's crazy. I have issues with it, but it's so good. Major content warning still. Be on the lookout for a spoiler breakdown coming soon. And remember, always look for the good.